Hello guys, I am Yadik Reddy and welcome to my channel HYI Tutorials. In this video, we will try to understand what are the different log levels available in the extent reports and what is the difference between each of these log levels, how do we use all these log levels and more importantly, what is the priority or order of these log levels. All these points we will try to cover in this chapter guys. Right? So these are the five different types of log levels available in the extent reports. Those are info, pass, warning, skip, fail. So if you have worked with earlier versions of extend report, you might have seen extra log levels there, right? Like error, debug and fatal. So those were removed in the version 5. So from the version 5, we only have these 5 log levels. That is because in the recent versions of testng and junit, they have removed those log levels. So test extend reports also removed those log levels from its implementation. Right? If the test ng and JUnit is not having those log levels, what is the point of having them in the extent reports? So that is the reason extent reports also removed those log levels. So we have only five different types of log levels. Those are info, pass, warning, skip, fail. So now we will try to understand how do we use all these log levels and then what is the difference between all of these things and what is the order of these things also. Fine. So let's jump into the Eclipse. Let's first create one class file here because for every chapter we are maintaining one class file. So we'll just name this as chapter 4 and we'll close all these things. Let's open chapter 4 and minimize this. So what exactly we did in our previous video? We created a sample basic report, right? Very simple HTML report we created using extend reports. We added few test cases under that and we created a simple HTML report. And we also understood what is the exact information about these things like extend reports and spark reporter instance and why we need to attach it and why we need to flush it and how to automatically open these things. All these things we understood, right? So now in this video, we'll mainly focus on the logging part only guys. Fine. So let's just remove all these things here and let's keep only one test. You see, now I have only one test, right? So earlier we have added only the pass, fail and skip statuses, right? Now we will try to cover all the five different types of logs and we will try to, you know, uh, play with some more scenarios here, right? So whenever you create any test, under that test, we will not have any option to add the status directly. So whenever you add any log event to the test, then the test will consider those log events as the test statuses, fine? But here you can add multiple log events, correct? So if the test is taking the status from the log events, how it is taking the log event status? Like we have so many log events here, right? What happens if I add multiple log events? So all those points also we will try to cover. So first we will add few log events here and then we will see guys, okay? Uh, I also told you like we can use the method chaining process, right? So let's remove this and let's use the method chaining process guys. So in our earlier video, we have already seen how to do this one, right? So in this one, I'll try to use a method chaining process. That means directly on top of this create test method, I can call the log events, fine. So I'll just mention log and what is the status you want to add. So status dot, first I'll try to call the information related things. So info one, I'll just say nothing much. I'll just mention it as info one. Whenever you are working with method chaining process, don't add the methods in the same line. So every method you keep it in the next line. Fine. The first method can be in the starting line or even if you want to just do this, that is also fine guys. Okay. So the method chaining should be represented in this format. Even if you represent in the single line also, it's okay. But readability will not be there, right? Readability is also one of the important factors in the automation, not just automation in any programming, right? So that is why we have to represent in this manner, right? So after this, I'll try to log something and I'll use the log methods only. Status dot info again, and then I will say info two. So here don't get confused guys. You can use any log events n number of times. That means for example, I want to add info related logs. I can use it hundred times or thousand times also there is no limit, right? There is no limit basically. You can repeat your log level n number of times and you can use all of your log levels also into the test, right? Based upon your requirement, you have to match these things and use them, 
fine so and similarly i'll just add one more okay i'll just keep on adding some things like this and i'll just change the status guys so few three things i'll make it as info and then i'll just make it as pass okay and i'll keep one as pass and here pass and then i'll add few more things as warning and skip so all of the log levels i'm trying to add here guys fine warning and the same i'll just repeat for this one also warning warning and then skip and here also skip and then fail and here also fail fail and fail right and you can just repeat in this manner also guys there is no rule like you have to first in define all the info and then go for other things right so you can define like this also okay so your extent reports code will not show any error for you you can first define the info and then you can define the pass and then you can define warning and then skip and then info and then fail so extent reports will not show any error here okay but if you do something like this we have a problem i will tell you what is the problem later so now let me just execute this. So you can see all the log events are actually added to the test case, right? So we have one test case here and all these log events are added to the test case. Correct. The info is repeated thrice and pass is repeated only once. Warning is repeated twice and skip is repeated only once. Fail is repeated twice, right? But at the end of the test, you have the status as fail here, right? For your test the status is fail but how it is actually taking that status what is the logic behind that so some of you might be thinking like so in this logs the last log is having the status as fail so last log status is considered as test status so some of you might be thinking like that right so let me do one thing guys so let me just change this to pass fine so I'm just changing it to pass and let's execute one more time. So now you observe, even though I have the last status as pass, still my test is actually failed only, right? My overall test status is considered as fail only. Even though I have the last log event as pass, my entire test status is showing as fail only. So what exactly is the logic behind this? So let me show you guys. So here I have clearly mentioned you the order of this one. So what you need to do, whatever the logs you are actually adding to your test, if you arrange all of those log levels in this order, if you arrange all of those log levels in this order, whatever the log level that is on the top, that log level will be considered as the entire test status. Fine. So this is little bit confusing for you. But let me rephrase it again. If you add, I mean, if you arrange all of your log levels from the test in this order, then whatever is coming on the top, that log level will be considered as the entire test status. Fine. So let me do it one more time here. So for example, I have info, info, pass, warning and all these things. Okay. So let me just arrange all these things. So first I have fail. So I will write fail here. And then below that, what is the skip? So do I have any skip here? I have skip, right? So I will add skip here. And do I have any warning? Yes, I have warning. So warning is there. And then do I have any pass? Yes. So I will add this one. Do I have any fail? Sorry, info? Yes, I have info, right? So all these log events status, I'm actually arranging in this order, right? So when you arrange in this order, what is on the top? Fail, right? So fail will be your test status in this scenario. You got my point? Whatever is sitting on the top, that is your overall test status. Okay. So if, if you remove this fail statement here, what happens? You don't have the fail status here, right? So now you have only this order. Skip, warning, pass, info. You don't have fail here, right? 
so your test status will become skip now you see that i'll execute this and you can see in the result also now you see for your test the status is skip okay so even if you don't have the skip also here okay even if you don't have the skip also so this is also gone right so your topmost thing is warning so your test status will be warning now so let me uh, save this and execute now you see your test status is warning and even if you remove all these warnings also and you have info and pass only in that scenario your topmost thing is pass that means your entire test will actually pass fine so this order it will actually follow now you see it is pass so whatever the log events that you have you need to arrange all those log events in this format one more thing is missing that is fail so if you arrange in this format then whatever is coming on the top this will be considered as your test status you might not be having any log or skip or anything or maybe you are not having any pass status also all right you are not having any pass status consider like this so in this scenario what happens you have info and okay here also pass i will remove so in this scenario what happens you have info warning and skip only right so that means you have to remove this one and this one also from your list of uh, these things info warning and skip so skip is having the highest priority right so your test status will consider as a skip only okay you see so your log events will decide you the test status so that is why don't just input all the log events guys just because they are providing you good color coding and all don't use all the log events use the log events appropriately so whenever you want to actually fail the test use the fail status whenever you want to skip the test skip use the skip event whenever you want to uh, provide the status as warning use the warning thing right so for all the other things you can use the info like if you want to log the information like user navigated to so and so website and user clicked on so and so button and all those things you can use the info messages guys okay info is one log event that you can add fine so your test status is dependent on these log events if you add all the log events then your test will always fail if you add all the log events in any order your test will always fail so that is the reason you need to always use only the log events that are actually needed for your test fine just because it is providing good color coding don't use all the log events use the log events appropriately got my point so that is about the log events guys now you understood what is the difference between all these log events and how do we use the log events right so yeah there is no much difference guys everything will log you in the same way except the color coding but if you want to just log any particular type of information use that one that's it otherwise there is nothing and in real time except warning we will try to use almost the other all log events like all the four log events we will try to use but not the warning fine so that is for this video guys thank you for watching bye bye